So hello, good people of the internet. This is Tommy Kelly, and this is, of course, the Tommy Kelly Podcast, coming to you from a kind of um, almost nearly good weather, Ireland. We've been promised that this week we're going to have... Well, here's the thing. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been getting these new weather warnings that they seem to be want to do, where they've given them colours, so like even amber warning, red warning, and it's always for, always for cold the last while, because it's Ireland, you know, or rain or snow, and there's a lot of kind of alerts put out and stuff like that. So everything gets an alert and a name now, you know, just to instill the fear in people, just to make sure no one gets out of the fear and everyone remains a consumer. You know, no chance of, you know, anyone just sitting back and go, just life's all right, isn't it? I think I have everything I want. No chance. Alerts, alerts, colours, names, every w- bit of wind or every kind of weather that isn't, you know, any type of weather has to have a name and it has to have a personality and it's coming to get you. So yeah, that's what's been going on in Ireland with our weather. Um, but this, today, I noticed my Google and my weather alert. I should probably just switch off my weather alerts, to be honest. But then I wouldn't have something to complain about. But we are getting the hottest heat of all time coming and, you know, the, the alert is now that, oh, you're going to be evaporated and dehydrated <laughs> into, you know, there'll be a lot of, uh, what's that, self-combustion and uh, mysterious people going on fire with the heat that's coming from this wind from Africa. Fear, feel the fear, never feel safe, always feel the fear, buy our products. Incidentally, I have a few things on sale that may interest you in this fearful times. I have a magic and, uh, what is it, magic and divination deck called 40 Servants, and you can get that in a, in many different ways. You can get the actual deck itself from the game, game crafter. And it's 40 cards, full color, they look exactly the same and the same uh, size and thickness and quality and all that as the Magic the Gathering cards or any other kind of tarot cards. Some people say they're slightly thinner than some tarot cards, but that makes it easier to shuffle. There you go. Um, so there's that, you can get that. You can also get um, the Grimoire of the Forty Servants from Amazon, the great Amazon. You can get that in both print and in Kindle editions. You can get all the cards or which are like art prints, A5, laminated, signed by me. And you can get that in the store page over in Adventures and Woo Woo. And I am working currently on getting two other sizes of the Forty Servants deck together because that's what people have been asking me for. One is a bigger size, a jumbo size, and another is a small size, so that you can keep it in, a, in your wallet, for, you know, better for traveling and stuff like that. But if you want to know anything about Forty Servants or any of that kind of thing, just go to the40servants.com or 40servants.com because I paid for both URLs or you can just go to adventuresandwooboo.com and click on the thing that says 40 servants and you'll get all the information there including I will add how to use the 40 servants for both magic and divination without having to spend any money whatsoever you can use the entire system as both a divinatory tool and a magical tool for free and it'll tell you how to do that but buying the stuff helps me and you also get some cool stuff by doing it I also have the witch print still on sale. On sale, I'm still trying to flog this one. <laughs> there's about 11 of them sold so far, which means there's about 29 of them left. Which actually means there's 28 because I'm keeping one. And uh, yeah, so if you want in on that, it's uh, the price to includes. It's an A3, properly printed by the guy who prints my photos stuff, so that I entered competition. So top quality printing. It has a kind of a. A satin luster finish, uh, A3, full color, limited to 40, signed and numbered by me. And the price includes shipping, worldwide shipping. And it comes rolled and um, easy to frame then afterwards. And if you want to get that, which would very much help me out, because I have paid up front for all these prints and all the packaging materials. And I would like to recover my costs, if nothing else. Go to the store page in adventuresandwebby.com. It's over on the top banner on the top on the right hand side and you see the store and if you click on it there'll be a drop down where you can get the different things on a phone it may be different it's sometimes the menu stuff is underneath all of the stuff but it's there somewhere but if you're still having problems i will have the link to all of this stuff in the show notes below not necessarily in the youtube if you're listening to this on youtube it won't necessarily be in youtube but it will be on the adventures and woo site for this podcast so, yes, have I anything else in sale? I have a Patreon that you can also spend money on. Um, if you go to TommyKelly.com, it's T-O-M-M-I-E. 
Kelly, which is K-E-L-L-Y, nothing fancy there. I'll bring you to my Patreon, which you can support me in doing these podcasts, the blog, the 47 stuff I do, the videos, the 47 training videos, the free stuff I do. And in return, you get a host of rewards, including the digital deck, so you can download and print the deck for yourself. You get the PDF of the Grimoire of the 47s, which is the only place where you can get the actual PDF of it. You can also get all my comics, which is them, the Holy Numbers, and a few others, um, the Road Crew stuff. And there is flashcards, 47s flashcards, uh, online flashcards you can use. And there's some of the audiobook of the Grimoire of the 47s, which I am so intending to go back to when I get the time. It's just I have not got the time to get back to it, but I do intend to get it. And it all depends on which part of the tier level reward system you go to. There's also the journey, which is this meditation, shadow work, personal development for wizards thing that we were doing uh, this year uh, as part of the Patreon. It's just it's another reward. It was something I was going to be doing anyway. And I decided why not ask other people today want to do it too. And it's a kind of a cool reward to give to people in the Patreon, and that's from the $5 and above monthly reward. And we're into month, January, February, March, April 4, and we have, uh, every month we have a different servitor, we have a different team, and we walk through different parts of our personalities and our shadows, trying to, uh, you know, become better people, essentially, which is more or less the great work, as I see it, is to become as best a person as you possibly can. And you get to define what that is, which is super nifty. So the journey is great. People are enjoying that. Um, there's a Facebook group that you can join in and uh, everyone you know, gives feedback, whatever. Um, and you can start any time. You don't have to start it in January 1st with the rest of us. It's an ongoing thing. It does last 12 months, but you can start those 12 months whenever you want. So have I sold you everything that I possibly could sell you? I think I have. Um, the other news that was meant to be happening this week is that I was meant to do the end of the Ramsey Duke S-S-O-T-B-M-E book and I just didn't get a chance to finish to read the chapters to be honest because my reading time is all taken up by The Tree Body Problem which is the first science fiction uh, book I have read in oh my god I like years 10 years probably and um, that's not as bad as it sounds but it's the first probably fiction book I've read in a long while too the last fiction book I read was the um the the Ninth Gate one, what's that called? The Dante, not the Dante Club, the, um, the Dumas Club. And before then, it's a long while since I read a fiction book, probably a James Her- Herbert book. So I'm trying to get back into fiction and I'm really, really enjoying this. The Tree Body Problem by Chin Lu or something. He's a Chinese guy. Uh, Chinese people put their second names first, so I, that kind of confused me. But it's on the Amazon, it's on Audible. I usually buy both or buy the... Uh, the audible book and the uh, kindle version so the, uh, and it syncs up so if you listen to audiobook it puts you into the proper place in your kindle and uh yeah i'm enjoying it and I don't always do that it's only if they, sometimes they give you a special deal and then this one they did give you a special deal that if you buy the kindle book you get the audiobook for like two quid extra and it's, it's worth it the problem with three body problem is that the third book is not on audible in the uh, uk store which is the one i have to use um i'm not even i think i've seen it there at one point so i'm not sure if it's a licensing issue so i was reading that and i've reading um if some other stuff i'm reading this book called the pat which is about Taoism, which i'm really enjoying and just have a pile of books here because i'm doing a video later about books and yeah and the other thing that came in uh, was uh, jason Lou's um john d book which i'm really looking forward to doing the uh, he kindly sent me well his publisher kindly sent me because jason told him to uh a review copy so there will be a, a review coming uh, in the not too distant future which will probably be on the podcast rather than a written one but we'll see how it goes i haven't actually done a, a written blog in a while so that might be the thing anyway the last bit of news before we get to the main section of the thing which i'm sure a lot of you are here for um is that the photography exhibition if you've been following my ranting about the club the photography club over the last while i've been having my ups and downs with knowing my place in it and all of that things so last thursday last friday we had our exhibition which is at the end of the year everyone gets to pick a certain amount of photos and they're put in the basement gallery in the town hall in dundalk and depending on what category you're in i'm in the non-advanced so i got to have two which turn into three 
and then uh, other ones have four and five that they can put in. And I was under an impression that it was a co their competitive element to it, but I thought it was just like the judge that was going around would just pick, and I think this is the best photo of the entire thing. Here it is, end of story. But it turns out there was a lot more reward, uh, awards than that. And it, so there was an, the non-advanced and then the advanced, the, both the intermediate and the senior was kind of lumped together for the awards. So in my section, my photo silence got an honorable mention, which was, I just thought, oh, wow, this is amazing. I couldn't believe that. Went up and did my very awkward kind of <laughs> handshakey thing. At one point I did uh, put my hand out to shake the judge's hand and she had her back to me, much to the hilarity of uh, my friend Enda and my wife Vanessa, who thought that was just the most funniest thing that has ever happened in the entirety of the world. Which is nice, you know, when you're in front of whatever it was, 70 or 80 people. Well, it actually wasn't that embarrassing, it was quite funny more than anything. But, so, honourable mention for silence, and then um, Window Girl came in second in my category. So I had to go back up again, shake the hand of the judge, and then Married came first in the section. So I was delighted with that. It didn't win the overall in the section, the overall was uh, won by uh, Pete, who was very good in a great photo. But uh, it won in the colour section, so it was number two and number one in the colour section and an honourable mention. So all three images that I put into the gallery got um, some sort of either a mention or one, which was fantastic and um, really made me feel great about myself I have to, and my photography, I have to say. And I had loads of the people in the club coming up to me to congratulate me and, you know, so well done. And that uh, one guy in particular says, like, yeah, I, I'm glad that you did so well because I feel, you, you know, you... You were a bit hard done by, in a sense, by the league and stuff like that. And because uh, I had the whole that thing, oh, they don't understand me and all that kind of thing. And the judge was kind of into the stuff I meant to. I kind of have to let go of that badge of they don't understand me. Because some people do understand me. So I just have to get better at it. And that's the thing. And stop complaining. And if you're going to do these comp competitions, do these competitions. So I got lots of advice, lots of feedback, lots of thing, and I'm in a good place with my photography. I'm also glad that it's coming to the end. There's two more weeks of the photography club, and then it's finished for the summer and doesn't start again until September. And I am glad of that. Um, apart from I will miss the social interaction section of it, which I really enjoy. But I am looking forward to the break from the whole thing. So I think, um, good people of the internet, that is you up to date with most things I am doing. Uh, that may be of interest to people. Not sure how interesting it is to people, but there you go. Um, so let's get into the main section of this, which is a kind of a case magic kind of idea, ritual, to try and get a bit more um, feedback from um, a future you. And so down to some actual chaos magic on the podcast, which is great and something I want to try and do a bit more of. This ritual or this idea or is something that I've had in my mind for a long while and at one stage was going to form the major part of a fiction book that I was going to write. And may still at some stage in the future, but it's just not something that I'm going to be able to dedicate any time to for quite some time. So I thought rather than just keeping it all to myself that I would at least put it out there and see if anyone else had an interest in doing it, and seeing if, if uh, what sort of results and whatever. And then if it does do something well, then at least I have some feedback to put it into the book at some stage. And it was only an element of the, the book, so it's, it's not like I'm giving away huge plots or anything. I also kind of touched a bit on this idea um, a while back on the blog, with a blog called Getting Advice from a Future You, but that was more geared towards, in a sense, your HGA or Holy Guardian Angel contact or the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel, as is known in certain um, circles, or getting in touch with your higher self, your true self, your complete itself, and allowing the uh, information to come back. And in that blog, the idea was that you would surrender to your holy guardian angel, which is not like it's not a new idea or anything like that. But I was pointing out some problems that we can have in this thing. And it's again something I want to touch on with this one. But first, what I think I should probably explain what I want to do or what the idea is before I go on or about uh, 
you know, what could go wrong with it. So the idea is basically that to pick a day or a significant day, not na- make it a significant day, not pick a you know, so that you're going to have a day in the future that's significant where you're going to try and have every succession version of you to be able to in some way contact or send information to this particular point in time. So you're going to like put a flag in the ground going, this is the point in time. And then from then on, as if you can send stuff back to it. So that's the kind of idea, so that you have more of an insight into how future, what, you know, more advice from a future self, as that other thing says. Now, the difference between the blog and this is that the Holy Guardian Angel is outside of time and space, if we were to believe it exists at all. And that's for the sake of argument to believe it does. And so his, her, or its kind of interaction with you would be from a very different place, from a human place, maybe. You know, so some people think it's kind of an angel, as in the Holy Guardian Angel. Some think it's something separate from you rather than just, you know, an actual guardian spirit of something. So there's, it's it's still, whatever way we look at it, is separate from the personality you are today. But it is where you're aiming to be. In, in you know, that's your ultimate destination. Some people believe, some people don't believe that. That's what I kind of, that's what I take from it. The problem with kind of taking any kind of advice from a future you or from a future situation is that you you have to be open to it. And the thing I talked about in the blog post is that I could go back in time and, sp- and have great advice for the 20-year-old Tommy sitting uh, uh, in his, where would I have been when I was 20? In flat tree, probably? Maybe. One of those places. Could have been at the Carrick Road. Not that it makes any difference to you, but there you go. And he wouldn't listen to me because he has his mind made up. He understands how the world works. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows everything and he's totally right. And so no, even though it would be me, him coming back, giving him advice, it'd be very hard for him to accept it because it would, it would, the advice that I would give would have to entail him to have to change his worldview dramatically, which happened naturally, of course, over the period of time because I just did turn into who I am now. But it would be too hard because he wouldn't be open for it. So the thing for all of these things, the first prerequisite of this kind of ritual is that you have to be open to hear advice that you don't want to hear or you don't understand or you don't agree with. And this is important because you can obviously discount stuff because you don't disagree with it. You know, you don't agree with it. And how often has it then been a case that you've had an idea or have you thought some way and then in the future you think the complete opposite, but you had to go through the transistory kind of way to get to that point of view. So this one, do you have to start from the point of view of being open to whatever comes in and accepting of it? No, it's up to you to act on it or not. This is all just like, in a certain extent, it's a head game. So it's not like you don't, if you totally vehemently disagree with something, obviously don't do it. Like take, go with your better judgment on these things. So the kind of idea what I have is so you're going to pick a day, some significant day in the future, and it would be something that isn't part of your routine. So it wouldn't be if you work in an office every day, I wouldn't pick it an office day because I'm trying to make it kind of more discernible uh, when you look back, you know, a day that was a bit more unique than other days. So you could set aside a day for this. A good day for this could be like a significant birthday or something that, you you know, you're going to be doing something like a, um, a particular trip or something like that. But one day that you're going to focus in on and accept and have it in the future, don't have it like um, tomorrow or something, you know, really think about this, what, what would be a good day where um, it would be a good focal point for energy to come towards. And the idea of where it came from in this, and this might explain it a bit better, is that I often have tried to get some sort of response or some sort of feedback from a future version of myself who had gone past something that I was up against. One instance would be like, say, when I was doing my driving test and I tried to, because I was so nervous about it, I tried to pick a point in time where that was fairly unique that I would remember after my driving test that I could send back how it went, you know, or, you know, to chill out or, you know, to, you know, you did well or whatever to try and calm. So I had a certain place where I went to that I wouldn't normally have gone to. So that after I had the driving test, I could send, mentally send, you know, visualize that place and try and send it back. And I've done this on a number of different occasions and different times with different things. But uh, 
particularly with tests or uh, anything like that or something that was troubling me or so you know some that you had to do a talk or something or whatever and there is a sense of calm or is there a sense of healing or something that has come back and sometimes sometimes it didn't happen at all something absolutely nothing happened and sometimes i did get answers back that were important and helped me then go through the things so i think it's a worthwhile experiment it could be complete woo woo but this is what we're here for ladies and gentlemen and good people of the internet this is what, what what we do here at the Tommy Kelly Podcast. So we're going to pick a time in the future, a day in the future. We're going to dedicate it to our future self, being able to send back information, healing, love, energy, or whatever it is we're looking for in particular. So that what could 90-year-old you tell you whatever age you are now? So like 90-year-old Tommy might be able to tell 40-year-old Tommy as he is today. And we're going to try to make it as significant as possible so that it's easily easy to visualize. So once we go past today, any sort of significant information or anything that happens, is we can instantly think of this place and send the information back. Because as we know, time probably doesn't exist. Consciousness may or may not be local. So all of these things might be, you know, possible in, in, in an actual science kind of way rather than a woo-woo way. But for the minute, we're just in the woo-woo. So a thing that I would recommend is probably to pick a song that you will play a lot on this day. So that when you hear the song in the future, it will remind you of this time and you will go back. So the only song you will play on that day is this. And a song I would recommend is a song that you know and like, but wouldn't be something that you would play that often. And the only example I can think of right now is like for me, is the police song, Walking on the Moon. Song I know, I know very well, but it would not be something I would ever put, uh, I would ever put on. You know, it's not something I would willingly open up Spotify and put, put it on. So it's a song I know, but wouldn't be in my regular rotation. Now that might work for you if you're a huge police fan, and it also might work for you if you hate the police or just dislike that song. So pick your own song or a piece of music, classical music, but not something that is in your regular repertoire of stuff that you listen to. And play that the whole time on the day so that that would be your link then into the future. So every time you have some important information or something that you want to send back in time to to that day you can put on that song and get that connection because i feel there's something in music that certainly can bring you back to certain times because i've often listened to music i haven't listened to in a long time and i'm instantly brought back to a moment or a time or an era and um, the only thing that comes close to that um, and is actually probably more potent than it is a smell so i would also recommend getting a particular incense that again you don't you don't you know you don't use regularly or it wouldn't be something that you would normally have or that you would come across it'd be something that you have to dedicate in a sense to this now don't get too insane about it if it's something that like at some point you might hear uh, get an incense or smell that's similar and you know don't freak just it is what it is so one to, to doing that would probably maybe get an incense that you're not necessarily that fond of you know something that you don't like but has a very sharp and particular scent that would bring you back and again burn that constantly over the day that you have put aside so you have your music you have the smell you can maybe have a sigil a sigil would be another great idea where you 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 visualize that sigil and that'll bring you back to this day so on on that day that you will just stare at the sigil as as much as uh, as you can and you know get very familiar with it uh, or even make it on that day and that again would be your third connection you could bring it a lot of the uh, different things if you want you could have certain drinks or whatever whatever anything you can think that would link you to that day that then in the future you can return back easily a visualization go to a certain place that you wouldn't normally go to um or you know introduce colors any of these things you know go with us and see what happens see what see what you come up with you'll have your own ideas about these things and then on that day at some point have a meditation where you sit down try to um you know clear your mind completely maybe do a journey whatever it is and allow whatever energy or whatever signals or whatever messages or whatever is available to you to come in no, with no judgments and don't try and disagree with it if you do disagree with it. Just write, and just write it all down write whatever and it doesn't if something doesn't come in that meditation just anything that comes to you on that day and um, you know just be aware of it and just kind of acknowledge it and write it down and you know see see if, if it's uh, if anything significant comes of any good help or if anything changed or if luck your luck changed or any of those kind of things 
So that's the idea. I don't know what would be the best name to call it. I suppose Big Day, the Big Day magic ritual, Significant Day ritual, one of these things. Whatever I decide it should be called will be the name of this podcast. But um, it's something I'm certainly going to do. Um, and you could do it for just, you could do it for anything. Like you could do it for a general thing of just anywhere in the future to send, you know, your future self, send back whatever information it can. Or you could have it for a, a certain thing that you've gone through, like I talked about before, like a driving test or something, but something more significant than that. You know, that's, um, it doesn't have to be just a general thing. You could look for a specific answer for something in the future. It's, you know, so that you, you will have knowledge of this in the future and then try and send it back. Now, I'm aware that to people who are not into this, this sounds massively woo-woo. And obviously it's not scientific. And it's possibly foolish, but at the same time, what have you got to lose? And it certainly feels like it's workable. And I, I'm previous experiences on a smaller key or on a smaller kind of a level have got some sort of feedback. And I do feel even if it is just mental placeboness, I'm good with mental placeboness, psychology, and all that stuff. If it works, it works, and if it helps you, it helps you, and that's and that's the goal here. So, to let me know how you get on, if you do do it, I would advise you to put a bit of planning into it rather than trying to jump into it so that it's, you know you can get it as significant as possible and as clear-cut and distinct as possible. Again, something you can do more than once. It doesn't always have to be, uh, you know, it's, it's not a once-in-your-lifetime thing, although it could be. It all depends on what, what your goal is, whatever. So if you have any ideas around this, I'd love to hear it. If you have any feedback about it, I would again love to hear it or any augmentations or improvements or any ideas in general, that would be super fantastic. And I look forward to hearing how you get on with it. And uh, yeah, so let me know about it. So, uh, so yeah. So that was another episode of the Tommy Kelly podcast uh, with actual magic this week which I'm quite happy with I'm going to try and get more into it but I can't promise anything this podcast is predominantly about me talking about me and unashamedly so so it's only if I can get the chaos actual rituals like, like I mean the whole thing is about chaos magic it's just my experience of life through the lens of using chaos magic or having a chaos magic viewpoint and I'm aware it's quite subjective but I assume that I'm not that special and so the things I'm going through are also some things that other people could be going through. And if I found some solution in my private life, my personal life, not private life, um, it may also be applicable to other people's lives. But I do enjoy the feedback and hearing from that. If you want to hear more podcasts, then go to TommyKellyPodcast.com and all of them are there. And you can sign up to Stitcher, to Pocket Cast, to iTunes, to... SoundCloud, to all of those, all the things, all those uh, uh, podcast ca- podcatchers. And if there's a podcatcher that you use that isn't, that you can't find it hard to sign up to, let me know and I'll try and work it out. There is an RSS feed there, so it should work. But, you know, if you're having issues, let me know. If you go to adventuresandwoo.com, that's the hub of all things, and you can find everything there from the Magic Primer, which will introduce you to magic if magic is new, if you're new to magic, if it's not something that you're uh, that familiar with. There is a, a host of blog posts and different kind of chaos magic ideas and different kind of rituals and stuff like that. There's some breakdowns of my hyper sigil that I did, which is uh, the graph novel Them. All of the stuff about the 40 servants is there, as we discussed in the intro. For devil stuff, I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff. Um, there's a YouTube which has all my vlogs, it has the Fort Servants video course. So if you want to know more about Fort Servants, there's a whole free video course there and numerous other things. And there is me on Twitter, which is at Tommy Kelly, Instagram at Tommy Kelly. I'm on Facebook, search for Adventures in Wubu. There is a Fort Servants Facebook group, which is coming up to nearly 2,000 people, which is awesome. And uh, search me everywhere. If I'm usually at Tommy Kelly on these things. And I forgot to say in the intro that the book club end of the Ramsey Jukes, the final chapter, will be next week, barring any more huge fiction reads by me. So good people of the internet, I wish that your day and week is a wonderful day and that you find happiness in all areas of your life. 
that everything is balanced, that everything is well, that all your relationships are happy and content, that those niggling problems that have been getting at you and building up your stress all just fade away and just resolve themselves. That your big worries, may it be money, may it be work, may it be relationships, whatever it is, that they just dissolve and become fixed and mended and all be all be clever, all be clever, all be well for you, all be worked out and balanced and in harmony. And that is my wish for you this week. So good people of the internet, be well.